you know, like Thai children are really good. Like technically, they are amazing. You cannot like compare European kids or Thai kids. We are on the same page. I, I talk about technically, yeah? But football is not only this, it's, it's a lot here, right? Like you go on a Tuesday training and you play a friendly match for the last 15 minutes. That is like a final there, no? Like no one want to lose. It's like we cannot accept the loss, right? We always have to compete. And here I feel like sometimes it's like, it's okay, maybe like, no? Like, oh, but my son technically is he good? Said, forget technically. We're not, you know? Because it doesn't mean that you are eight years old and you are technically very good, you're gonna make it. It's, it's not, you know, it doesn't mean that you can do 1,000 juggles, you are better than the one who do 10 juggles. Uh, bueno, me llamo Sergi, vengo de Barcelona, como, como ya es un poquito sabido por gracias a las redes sociales. A los jugadores en este caso es que se diviertan y sobre todo a los padres que no quieran correr demasiado. Que si el niño entra en un club, en una academia, y ahí está contento y se le trata bien. Ok, so my name is Jordi. Ok, I am the, the founder and the CEO of uh, PFA. Alongside with, with my partner, which is Bartes, he couldn't make it today, and he's uh, founder and CEO of the club. And this project started in 2006. Now we're going to start the seventh season in August. And we come, we come along the way, you know, like uh, we've been like very committed to the club. So I would say like one of the, the success of this club is because the, the coaching team that we have, that we always have, we, we have loads of good coaches coming from abroad. I will mention the names because I think it's important to, to, to let people know who, who was here before. So we had like A license like Victor Gonzalez, uh, Ruben Fortunato, Neil Capdevila. Now we have a new coach from Spain, is Sergi, Sergi Mulet that come, he was in China and then uh, he just started a month ago in, in PFA. And PFA is a club that is not I mean, I, I guess everyone is the same in Thailand, no? Like, you cannot only focus on football because there is many other things that you have to control. I would say, like, in PFA, we have different departments, right? We have the competition department, which is run by uh, Coach Junior and uh, Coach Kinu. Then we have the, our communication department is with a Japanese coach named Takeshi. Then we have Bartes, is the general manager and coordinator of the club. Myself is the academy director, and then we have uh, Cedric is the director of methodology of the club. So it's loads of things going on inside the club. It's not just, okay, we build the club, we have coaches, we train the kids. There's many other things that are involved on it. So I would say one of the success of PFA is that we always have the best coaches, and the, the coaches are very involved in the project, and that is something that I would say is different from the others, no? Like, we go along the way, we, we stick together like a family, right? You know, like, Thai children are really good. Like, technically, they are amazing. You cannot, like, compare European kids or Thai kids. We are on the same page. I, I talk about technically, yeah? But football is not only this, it's, it's a lot here, right? So I would say in Europe, like the kids are very hungry, you know? Like you go on a Tuesday training and you play a friendly match for the last 15 minutes. That is like a final there, no? Like no one wants to lose. It's like we cannot accept the loss, right? We always have to compete. And here I feel like sometimes it's like, it's okay, maybe like, no? Like, it's not, it's not a big deal, it's just a training. So if the, the, the huge abilities that the Thai children have, we can bring this mental thing like commit to, commit to the trainings, come to train, give 200% every training, be committed to your club. Like, not like I come, I not come. 
you know, like build a little bit of discipline within these players. Because at the end of the day, we travel a lot in Spain. We go in France many times. And we're there, we're competing. It's not like, okay, we can win, we can lose. You know, we cannot control everything, but the Thai children are really good, you know. It's nothing to say, oh, they are bad. No, we, we're good. But we need many things to change from, from the grassroots, from the foundation, right? From That is my main concern. And I always say to the parents, you know, they, sometimes they come and say, oh, but my son, technically, is he good? Said, Forget technically, we're not, you know, because it, it doesn't mean that you are eight years old and you are technically very good, you're going to make it. It's, it's not, you know, it doesn't mean that you can do 1,000 juggles, you are better than the one who do 10 juggles. It's, it's football is not about juggling, yeah? So, nothing to worry about that, you know? We, we have good kids, but we need to set up a good structure for these kids. That is. That is the priority if we want to move forward. Maybe the abuse of these children, of overtraining. These children have no like no loyalty to any club. Some children, eh? I don't talk. This is my opinion, right? Like you, you know, you let's say you start play football. You defend shirt like PFA. These colors is like. And I go to, to everything with this. But if these children are, now I play this, now I play the other club, now I play the other club, now tournament, now league, morning training, afternoon training. Is that right on that stage? Can we wait and do that when the kids are more older and just be a little bit more patient? Stick to something, find, find the club that you trust, that you believe the coach, that they have good planification and stick there. Have discipline, have loyalty to that club. I really think it's the way to go through all the stages, no? Like you start and, uh, you know, things are easier, it's more for fun, it's a learning stage, then it becomes more tougher, more physically. We cannot step two steps at a time. We need to go one by one all the way through, right? So. My opinion is this, we need a system and we need everyone to follow the system. Another problem that we have. So let's say in Thailand, no, we have the scholarship thing, right? So some, some universities offer scholarships, international schools offer scholarships. Um, then we have private academies, then we have clubs. International schools, they run their own thing. They have their own leagues, small leagues. The universities, they have their leagues. The clubs, they have another leagues. So there's constantly clashing. So back home, for example, you don't have school teams. It doesn't exist. You don't have university teams. It doesn't exist. You only have clubs. So you finish school, you, you check, you choose the club that you feel this, this club match with my philosophy. Uh, you know, I respect the coaches. I like what they're doing. You stick there, but I would say, you know, like just only one way. And then if, for example, you, you stay at the club and you stay for one season, you feel you want to move, you want to change because whatever the reasons are, you just move. That, that everyone change club sometimes, right? But what we cannot happen is that we just play everywhere. These kids are getting confused. These kids are just like, what is going on? Why I cannot represent one club and be loyal to it? Because as I said, it's not only this, it's, it's, it's about here, it's the passion, it's to defend the colors, it's to, to, to be committed, to be loyal to the, to the club that represents you, you know? So all these little things, we have to put it inside the Thai culture. Because in Thailand, like, I, I think now football is number one sport in Thailand, right? So, we have everything, really. We have good kids, we, you know, but we need the system. We need the structure and everybody go one way. Otherwise, it's just... Now, on, on the stage we are now, we are more looking at the present because the pandemic 
creates a big damage, not to PFA, to all the clubs in the world. So right now we are rebuilding the club. We are almost done. As I said, like 90% maybe the kids are back and we have lots of tryouts coming every week. So we are on that stage that we need to rebuild the club back and then move from there and, and see what, what are, are the next steps. We also trying to, to build a amateur team, like a T5 club, a T5 team, sorry. But this, as I said, our main priority now is to, to rebuild the, the club. That is not, a, it's not an, easy, an easy issue to, to deal with because many, like the, the people is scared, right? So it's just like, we are on that stage. I, we believe like next season, 22, 23 is gonna be a, a good season to to forget everything and, and move forward. Uh, PFA is the organizer of the TAR Asia Qualifiers. The TAR Asia Qualifiers is under 11 competition that the last edition was hosted in, in Bangkok. The next edition might be in December 2022, this year. We don't know the dates yet. And uh, it's, it's a competition that we bring teams from Indonesia, from Malaysia, from Japan. Last time, this time we're expecting to bring teams from, from Vietnam, from China. Let's see how, how we can approach and if people is willing to travel again. So basically you come to one competition, it's the same format as they're going to play in Spain. And it's a qualifiers, right? You play a competition, group stage, knockouts. If you win this competition, you travel to the tournament in Spain for free. That means that flight tickets, accommodation, food are, are fu fully paid for, for the winning team. I think it was like 10, 10 kids plus one coach or two coach are, are just free to go. It's very interesting. Last, last time, it was big success. Uh, Thai Port was the winner. The Thai Port 2009 won the competition. But unfortunately, the pandemic came. Thai Port couldn't travel. And, and then we, we communicate with Thai Port what we could do in, in change. Because like the competition every year is changing. It's always kept under 11. So they are too old already to play that competition. So we, we gave 100,000 baht for Thai Port in, you know, to, to exchange and to say, we are sorry, but we still give some symbolic amount of money to, to the parents and, and to, to the team to, to do whatever they want. So after, after we, we run the, the Thai Asia qualifiers in Bangkok, we get approach from other countries in, in Asia that they would like to host qualifications also. So we, we, we've done that because we are very close to the organizers in Spain, it's like friends. So we brought that tournament in, in Thailand to, to, to get the best team from Asia to bring him, them to Spain, right? But we get approach from some uh, organizations from France that they want to do that in a different age. So we believe there's a huge potential on that because there is no more interest. The fact that you can go to a competition, you can win and you can travel and play against top clubs in Europe. So we, be we believe it's just the start. I think in the future more projects are coming. Of course, it, it's not like only in Thailand. As I said, like in Indonesia, maybe it's going to happen something in the future, like host the qualifications. Thai teams go to Indonesia, teams from everywhere, and the winner go to France. That is something that we would like to be involved on it. Yeah. We are uh, working on a coaching course, which is going to be on the 2nd and the 3rd April. Uh, this course is going to be run by our director of methodology, Cedric from France, and Sergi Moulet from, from Spain. Uh, Cedric is a license and uh, Sergi is a pro license. This course is going to happen at Brighton, uh, Chris, uh, Brighton College. And yeah, it's, it's a course for, I would say, all, all 
even for the parents or people that likes football and wants to know a little bit more about it, like how we design a lesson plan. We also, it's, it's, it's very interesting actually because we have this, we have a platform that is the platform that PFA is using at work, it's called Football Aim. And this platform is for the coaches that are joining this course can use the platform to design lesson plans and, and, and all of this. So it's a very interesting project. Yeah. Yeah, then, then during this, this coaching course, uh, we want to share the time be between sometimes in, in classroom that we will uh, we'll point on some topics and time on the pitch where the, the coach uh, will be obs uh, will observe the, um, the training session and also the, the match then during the both days, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, the topics that uh, we will introduce is about the, the, the session design, how to structure, how to, to draw a, a training session. After is about how to run the training session and some, some tools to okay, uh, teach uh, how to teach the kids. Uh, also about the, the programmation, the, no, sorry, the, we don't say programmation in English, <laughs> about the periodization, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, all the topics and what we can, what we can train related with the, the edge of the, of the kids, because of course we don't, we don't train and we don't uh, uh, develop the same, uh, the same things with uh, kids of uh, five, six years old and a kid of uh, 15 or 16 years old. And it's all these, these topics that we will, uh, we will see during this, uh, this coaching course. Por lo que hace al curso de entrenador que vamos a realizar de PFA, creo que es una herramienta muy, muy, muy importante y desde aquí hago una llamada a entrenadores Thai que lo puedan aprovechar porque gracias a la experiencia que tienen mis compañeros ya que llevan muchos años aquí, más los conocimientos adquiridos en Europa, eh, en Francia o en Barcelona en este caso, más ahora mi granito de arena mmm, de mi experiencia tanto en China como en Barcelona, creo que los entrenadores ahí pueden mejorar muchísimo. Por ejemplo, yo me voy a centrar mucho en dos aspectos. Uno es el trabajo de amplitud, por qué jugamos en amplitud en el fútbol, por qué tenemos que aprovechar todo el campo y no estar encerrados. Y el otro tópico así que vamos a utilizar es el ataque y defensa de áreas. Al final en el fútbol eh, pasan muchas cosas en el campo, pero donde se ganan o se pierden partidos es dentro del área. Y por lo que he podido ver durante este breve tiempo que llevo aquí, hay muy pocos equipos que estén trabajados en estos dos aspectos. Entonces, como lo que veo aquí, eh, entiendo que es una, una cosa a nivel general, creo que vamos a ir en esos dos topics para que los entrenadores Thai lo puedan aprovechar y así mejorar a los jugadores. I'm Cedric, uh, from France, and I, I'm football coach since uh, 20 years, and now uh, six years in Thailand already, and it's my uh, fourth season in PFA. I'm the director of the methodology, and then uh, what is the meaning is uh, I try to give uh, guidelines to the coach, then every, every week we have one methodology meeting, and then we share uh, ideas with the coaches. We try to, to teach, to improve uh, all the coaching staff uh, about uh, session design, about what topic we can, uh, we can teach to the kids accordingly with the, the age group. All this, uh, this stuff to, to make sure that we, we give uh, quality during the training session and also during the, the, the matches. Eh, bueno, me llamo Sergi, vengo de Barcelona, como, como ya es un poquito sabido por gracias a las redes sociales. Eh, llevo más de 20 años entrenando, que parecen muchos, pero al final empecé de muy joven. Y bueno, he estado siempre entrenando en Barcelona, menos los dos últimos años que he estado entrenando en China, en Wuhan precisamente, en la ciudad que ahora es muy famosa por otras cosas. En, en el fútbol base de un equipo de Superliga China y ahora pues hace dos meses aún no 
he llegado aquí a Tailandia de la mano de PFA pues para, para involucrarme en ese proyecto nuevo que tienen, que es muy interesante. Mi, mi antiguo club, sobre todo mi club de formación, es el Havak Terrassa, un club de terraza de mi ciudad. Es un club muy humilde, muy de barrio, que esto nos hace a, pues, ser mucho más familiar. Y como anécdota un poquito, eh, en ese club han salido jugadores como Xavi Hernández, actual entrenador de, del FC Barcelona, Sergio Busquets, eh, jugador del FC Barcelona y campeón del mundo, eh, Ricky Puig, actual jugador de la primera plantilla de, de FC Barcelona, así como también Víctor Sánchez, ex capitán, ahora ya no, ex capitán del Real Club Deportivo Español. Es decir, es un club muy conocido en el fútbol base catalán y eso se nota cuando hay muchos jugadores que salen de allí para llegar al fútbol profesional. Como mensaje final, lo que sí que les diría a los chavales, a los jugadores en este caso, es que se diviertan. Y sobre todo a los padres que no quieran correr demasiado. Que si el niño entra en un club, en una academia, y ahí está contento y se le trata bien, que siga, que no tenga prisa para llegar al fútbol profesional. Al final, el jugador tiene que divertirse. Si no se divierte, no va a llegar a ningún sitio. Y este es un mensaje para los padres, que dejen al jugador divertirse y que dejen al entrenador dirigir y entrenar, que no se metan en cosas, igual que nosotros no nos podamos meter en su trabajo, ellos que nos dejen trabajar a nosotros y a partir de ahí verán que el niño va creciendo, pero sobre todo que no lo vayan llevando a diferentes clubes porque esto es perjudicial para el jugador. Un poquito es este el mensaje y con esto os dejamos. Un abrazo.